In this video, we're going to be going over how to modify the front end callbacks. So the front end callback is used by TestN to log the users in and out of the system. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to take the user login dialog. I cleaned it up a little bit, built it into a PPL, and then we're going to use it to log in a TestN user into the system using the Windows user management. We're not going to write this from scratch. I've posted the code on GitLab because the test and user management the way we're using it here is, is has always been a bit iffy in my opinion i don't know why they haven't fixed it yet so let's get started if you search for front end callbacks you'll get a nice page out of the test and help uh, file explaining what it is and how to use it the most important thing is never ever modify the original you want to copy it out of test and if you're doing this from scratch or you need to make changes and put it inside your public components callbacks front end directory and the reason you want to do that is is that you will screw it up when you're playing with it and when you screw it up if you don't if you can't fall back to the original then you cannot log into test and you will have to reinstall this is also where environments come in handy as well if you want to switch between an environment that is using the front end callback and the, the default environment if you do that then you can launch test and without any environments open your custom front end callback modify it save it then relaunch test and inside your environment and see if it works that way you're never locked out of test and okay as you can see inside my ate1 public components callbacks front end directory i've got a test sequence called front end callbacks i've got my ppl that has my dialogue and I haven't cleaned that up yet, but these are the original uh, DLL that TestN uses for the, the default login lockout dialog. These are written in, in CVI, so it's some pretty boilerplate C code to do that. The, the version that's actually inside your original directory also has the, the C files if you're interested in looking at how it works. Okay, let's clean that up. And let's demonstrate how this works. I'm opening up test and inside my environment file. And now instead of having the default dialog, you're going to see a LabVIEW dialog pop up. It had to load the LabVIEW engine first, which is why it's a little bit slower. And then inside my computer management, my local users, I have created a group called test and administrators, and I've created a user called test and admin. And I'm now going to log in as that. It is authenticated against the local user directory. You can see I'm logged in as test and admin, and I'm running inside my custom environment. What's going on under the hood if we open up the file is there's a few things, and this requires tickling the, the test and API in such a way. It, it's not obvious how to do it. There's some write-ups on how you can you can write this yourself, but I would recommend going through some of the examples I've shipped and some of the online white papers because it is not intuitive. It's not as nearly as easy as it should be. So basically, if you come in here, you got two parameters, log out and is initial login. I'm not using it is initial logins for this example, but I am using the log out. And what happens with this is that the test and engine will pass in this parameter of if log out is true, it wants you to log out and if log out is false, then it wants you to log in. So this needs to be ch changed, but we'll fix that later. Basically, the the def the health file, and I wrote a blog po uh, actual blog post about this as well. Test and user management is does not have any security built in whatsoever. The the way to change the user is as easy as this. You just basically set the run, run state.engine.current user or something. If you want to log out, you just set it to nothing and it logs you out. If you want to log it in, you need to find it and then log in. So what we do here is if we're not logging out, then we show the dialog. And then if the user is able to, to authenticate against the dialog, the dialog will pass out a couple things. One is the operator name, which is very important. And the other one is the groups. So one of the things we're picking up in this dialog is all the Windows groups that the user is 
is part of. And then we go and we check to see if the name exists. If the name exists, we run a subsequence called create user. And this has a very specific set of steps you need to do to, to create the user. I pulled this straight out of one of the examples. And then if it does exist already, then we are gonna grab the user object from the engine. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna update the group membership, which is I'm gonna go back through, and first I'm gonna take the, the groups reported by the, the Windows user manager, and I'm gonna rename a few of them. So for instance, the test and administrator group, the test end doesn't know about that. I could create that group and set permissions if I cared, but in this case, I'm just cheating and I'm saying, okay, well, my test and administrator group corresponds to, to, te or to the test stands built-in administrator group. And for the users group, that corresponds to the operator group. If you had other domain name uh, groups, this is also where you would parse them or add them to it. Then once I've matched, mapped them, I run this update group membership subsequence. And what this uh, subsequence does is basically it checks to see if it if it runs the get user group and the for that particular group name and it comes back as nothing, that means that group does not exist. So for instance, you're you may have four or five Windows groups that you're part of for various reasons, and you only care about one or two of them typically. So I added a no, this does nothing. If it doesn't exist in test end, don't worry about it. If it does exist in test end, then we need to get all the group members and we need to check to see if we need to, to uh, add it to the group or remove it from the group. And you have to iterate through all the members of the group to make to verify this. And these different steps are just tickling the engine to do that functionality. So what this ends up effectively doing is every time you try and log in, it will authenticate against the Windows user users management. It will then create a user if required, and then it will update the group membership. So if, a, if somebody is part of a particular group, they always have that group inside test end. And one of the reasons that we'll sometimes delete members out of the group is if somebody loses a group for permission, for instance, you have an operator, you promote it to technician, then you would you would change that in the Windows side, and then this would make sure that the groups that they and permissions they have available always reflect what you've done with the Windows uh, user management on it. So this is on uh, uh, GitLab. There's going to be a, a link in the description. And that's pretty much it. It's uh, fairly complicated. It looks simple, but there's a lot of... of tricky tickling of the API to make that work correctly. I don't particularly like how it's not intuitive, but I haven't found a better way to do this. And that's how you integrate uh, Windows user management into test and the same concept works with uh, domain management as well if you wanted to use domain uh, groups, but I haven't added domain login functionality to the show login dialog. It's the same set a library or C sharp libraries of what you tickle or what you use to tickle the active directory, but I just haven't gone around to implementing it that yet.